Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week we're going to take a look at how to set up the basic DNS and some of the server settings uh, on your server. Now what we're going to do is cover this section right here. I want to walk through these different things because these are important for you to get set up correctly in order for your server to function the way that you want it to. Now before we look at host name or computer name, I just want to go here to internet because this is a new service that's been added with uh, OS X Server uh, Yosemite or Server 4. Uh, this wasn't in there before. It's the reachability service and it really is a nice addition to server because it saves you some time in checking out your services to see if they're reachable or not. So let's click on the details here and you can see it says I have two services that are reachable at my public IP address. So Apple is actually testing this to see if those services can be reached meaning are the right ports open, is everything set up correctly for them to be reached. So let's just go to details here for a minute. And what you can see is you can see I've got the status enabled here of reachability so that everything's ready to go. It shows my external IP address which it uh, pings and reads automatically for me. Now it shows my public host name and you notice it says I have no public host name and that's because I haven't set up DNS yet in order to have a public host name. Again this public host name would represent a registered domain name. That's the difference there. It's not uh, not your internal or anything like that, but a registered domain name that I've got out on the internet. And so it's able to also ping that to see if that's working as well. But right now we haven't set that up so it says none. Now you can see that it says when it last checked, it checked today, and now I just moved over that. It's going to check again to make sure those services are available. And what's nice about that is if I'm ever wondering why I can't reach my server and I want to see if anything's wrong, I can just click this and have it do the check for me. Now it might take a little bit of time for that check to finish uh, because it's going to kind of go out and do its service check. But let me show you down here. Uh, you notice here I've got server administration uh, shows that it's available and the screen sharing that was there disappeared. So it wasn't able to check that to see if that was working or not and so that caused an error. And I, like I said I can just click this again, check it and now it's showing. So it probably just was some network traffic. Uh, but it allows me again to do that check to see if, if my services are reachable or not. So let me just click done there. So this is a great addition and I wanted to show you that first so that I can show you what happens when we change the domain name and show how that changes. Now here's the host name of my server and what it does is it defaults to my local host name. Notice that it matches my computer name and that's because with standard OS 10 your computer name basically becomes your host name. They just take basically the computer name and then add .local on the end of it. And, uh, and that's how that works by, by uh, default. What we're going to do now is we're going to change our host name. Uh, I have a registered domain name so I want to change it to that. But I want to show you the different options that you've got in setting up your host name. So let's just come over here to edit. And so what it's going to do is evaluate my network, check my devices and all of that on my server uh, before it lets me actually go through the process of changing my host name. So it's basically telling me, hey, after changing this, some devices using your current services may need to be reconfigured. And that's, again, if you've already set up a host name and you're changing it again, you're going to cause some interruption in service. Since we've just done a .local, we're okay right now. So let's just click Next. Now what's nice about server is it gives you options for accessing your server, and it shows you the various ways that you can configure your host name in order to access your server. Now you'll notice we've got local network, local network and VPN and internet. So let's go through what those mean. Local network basically just means that I'm only planning on accessing my server within my local network. I'm not trying to get it from outside, you know, when I'm away from my network. I'm not trying to access it outside that to get to files or different services that I've got set up. I only want to use it when I'm inside my local network. If that's the case, then you would just follow your domain name with a .local. So you can put whatever you want. You can have, have it just be what I had there, Todd's Mac Mini .local. But whatever you want, you can set that up. But it'll be .local, and if it's .local, you cannot access it outside your network. Now, down here, we've got a local network and VPN. Now, what this means is that I can only access my stuff in my local network, but if I'm outside my network and I want to access some of the services, I can do that, but only if I establish a VPN connection first. And so VPN is one of the services we have over here in the sidebar that I'll show you how to set up. But I have to, I have to be VPNed into my server in order for me to access some of those services remotely. And so if I do that, it says I need to set up my host name to end in .private. Again, I can do the same thing. I can say Todd's Mac Mini .private. I can say, you know, example .private. Whatever I want to put there, uh, I can set that up, but I, it's got to end in .private. But again, all that means though is I don't have a registered domain name. It means that I've got to use VPN to get back in my network to access it.
Then finally, we have Internet, which basically is you can access your server in your local network and outside your network because you have a registered domain name. Now, a registered domain name means you went and bought uh, a domain name, you know, like, uh, for instance, uh, I've got ToddOltoff.com. You might have Example.com, whatever you've got. You've bought a .com or a .net or something like that. And since you have a registered domain name, that means someone on the outset, outside has your address and can track you back to your server. And so it's also got this little uh, arrow here to learn about how to set that up and brings up a little help menu for you if you need a little more information on that. But that gives you an idea of how to set it up. And it, Server does a really nice job of simplifying it to make it easy to check out. Now, in my case, I want to set up one for the Internet uh, because I have a registered domain name. So that's what I'm going to choose, and I'm going to say Next. Now, when I go to the next screen, what it does is it says, uh, here's your computer name. Here's what we have set up for your computer name. And here's your current host name. And so it says, what do you want your host name to be? And you need to replace it with whatever you, whatever you want. Uh, in my case, I'm going uh, I'm gonna set it up with my domain name here. So I'm just going to say server.toddoltoff.com. And that's how I'm going to set it up. This, this part here would be what your registered domain name would be. And I would put a server in front of it, uh, especially if you're using other services outside your network. Uh, you know, if you're using uh, maybe your web hosting from your domain name or you're using, uh, you know, their mail service or something, then you probably want to distinguish your server from theirs by just putting server in front of it. It's up to you on how you want to do that, uh, but that's a good idea for a host name. You want to put something dot, you know, your domain name dot com or dot net or whatever it is. Now, I can also change the computer name right here if I want to. I'm going to leave that alone because I want to show you another way to change it. But I could change it on here if I wanted to. And I can also change my network address. If I just click Edit right here, you'll notice that it drops me right into uh, basically what's a System Preferences uh, Network Pane. And so in here, I could actually go through and set up the various network settings if I wanted to make it different. Now, I already talked about this in the network screencast on how to set that up and what this looks like. So I'm just going to leave it alone. But I wanted you to know that you could come in here and actually configure it all in one step if you wanted to. So let's just cancel that. So that now I've got this set the way I want it to, I'm just going to go ahead and say Finish. And what it's going to do is ask me if, it, if I want to set up DNS or not. So server basically can automatically set up DNS for you uh, that will resolve to your host name so that you don't have to do it alone. Now DNS is down here. It's one of these advanced services. I've, it's hidden right now. Uh, but DNS is one of the services that you can set up and server will actually take care of all of that for you so that you can access your server using your host name. And it's it is going to affect your server's network settings. What I'm going to do, since I'm going to show you how to set up DNS uh, on, on our own, I'm actually going to skip that. And all we're going to do is set our host name. We're not going to set up DNS. All right, so all we're doing is making this our host name. We're not going to do anything with it. But if you wanted to, you could click Set Up DNS, and it would take care of DNS for you as well in one step and turn on that service. But for right now, I'm just going to skip it because I just want to do the host name. So you can see now it's updating the services with my host name right now and going through that process and finishing everything. And once it's done, uh, we should see some of those changes there on the screen. Now, it may take a little bit of time, but when you see that wheel spinning, you don't want to do anything until it's finished. So as you can see, it changed my host name to what I want it to be there, server.toddoltoff.com, and I'm ready to go. Now, as far as my computer name, again, this is the computer name that is set up for my local network, and it was automatically given to me. I can come in here, though, and edit it and change it to whatever I want to change it to. Uh, in this case, I think I'm just going to change it to server just to make it simple. And you can see as I type, it changes the local host name as well. We're going to say OK. And so now we've changed that local host name, and that's all set and ready to go. So we've got all those done. Now let's come in here to the internet for a second. Notice I still don't have a public host name. And I wanted to show you that because, because we did not set up DNS yet, uh, and we didn't set it up for it to be checked, it server doesn't think that I have a public, D, public DNS set up. I don't have a public host name. Even though I do have one, uh, because I haven't set up DNS, it's not reachable yet. And I wanted to show you that so you know why that wouldn't be there. But once we do that, in the next screencast when we talk about DNS, you'll see this change right in here once we get that set up. So I'm just going to say done. So as you can see, pretty simple to set up these different things. And why don't you notice something? You just see this number one that just showed up here? Let me just show you that alerts are working. Basically, it's letting me know that the host name has been changed. And so let me just uh, click on that. 
And you can see the host name for Todd's uh, Mac Mini .local has changed to server.toddoltoff.com. So it's just letting me know some of the services may not work correctly, and it's just letting me know that the issue's been successfully resolved and everything's good. But it's nice because Server does give me these alerts and notifications to let me know when changes are finished. So I'm just going to say Done. And if I wanted to just get rid of that, I could come down here and just say Clear All, and it will remove those different alerts. So I just want to let you know that that's there. So now notice, notice the change here once I move that off. See where it says my server now? And it's automatically saying that my public host name is there. Now, part of the reason for that is because I've already set up the DNS at my domain name, and that's why that change did happen. But I'm going to need DNS for that to work, which is what we'll cover in the next screencast. So it looks like it does do the check for the domain um, publicly, uh, regardless of whether DNS is set up uh, in your home network. So let me just finish that. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.